I was in a meeting recently for here in the Curia and we were discussing the preferences and the universal preferences, how they were discerned, explaining the process. And somebody said, well, that's great, but does that work for, for boards or for groups who mightn't have a religious background or for a group that might have people from different faith backgrounds? And we were exploring that question together and that's really why I decided to make this short video. And it's called discernment in the everyday. And as you know, the everyday is kind of messy and you don't always have time for prayer and you don't always have the perfect situations or the conditions. So discernment in the everyday, can that work? And the answer is yes, actually, it can. We need to adapt the basic principles of discernment and of spiritual conversation so that we can bring this really fantastic richness into our ordinary work, which is so busy often and where we have so many decisions to make in actually quite a short time. So there are three main ideas that I want to, to stress today. Everyone matters. That's the first principle. Those of you who know spiritual conversation, you know that there's this method of having a round where you go around a little bit formally and everyone gets a certain amount of time to speak. Three, four, five minutes. So everyone's respected. Everyone matters. And in Christian theology, that's because the Holy Spirit works in every person. But even in a, a normal human rights situation, human dignity is, is a fundamental value. So in any kind of meeting, if you're running a meeting, everyone matters. That's the key thing to bear in mind. And so to structure the meeting in such a way that everyone's voice is heard. Often the extroverts might speak more. So who are the quiet people who might be hesitating or shy to speak? Or if the meeting is in English, all the native English speakers will probably be inclined to say more and to speak more often. So if you're chairing a meeting, bring the other people in, encourage them. Everyone matters is key. Everyone has the right to speak. This is, this is a key thing. So whatever faith background they're from or no faith background in any meeting to keep everybody involved and to make sure everyone gets the right to speak. It's, if you read books on meetings and how to run meetings, it's there, but I want to underline that. The second point is about listening. Again, in our Christian and Catholic spiritual conversation, a key thing is, is active listening to people, to really listen to people. Often I'm tempted to, I'm hearing you, but I'm really thinking, what will I say in order to respond? Or I'm hearing you, but I want to make my own point. I want to insist on my point. I was in another meeting and we had a, a conversation among three or four people. And at the end of the meeting, nothing was really very clear. It was kind of a bit, bit confused. And somebody said, okay, We've all heard each other. Now let's take three minutes of silence and listen to yourself. Listen to what's going on in you at every level, your head, your heart, your gut. Listen to that. You can do this in any kind of meeting. You can take one minute or 30 seconds where you just give people a time to let all the arguments settle. And then listening, you really listen in a more profound way. And after that listening period, you go around the circle and say, okay, so what's happening in you? What's happening in you? Short summary, one or two minutes. And you'd be amazed at the kind of unity that can emerge. Not always, life isn't so simple, but the kind of unity that actually can emerge after this kind of listening. This is really helpful in a board meeting where there might have been confusion or conflict to say, okay, let's take a minute or two. It can happen in a commercial board meeting. It can happen in a, in a Jesuit university board meeting. This time of listening followed by respectful sharing. 
And then the third important point, and it's not always easy, is the point of freedom. Building a culture of freedom in your institution or helping to find a culture of freedom where people come in not so much with their minds closed and ready to convince somebody else that they're right and that you're wrong, but this atmosphere of, of genuine searching for the truth, this is really key. It's not so easy because our cultures teach us to be competitive. It's not easy at all. But over time, you can build a culture of freedom. People are really free, really indifferent, to use the language of Ignatius Loyola, ready to seek the best in Christian theology, ready to seek God's will. So the three points again, everyone matters. Listen, this time of listening, deep listening, especially if it's a conflictual meeting, and freedom, encouraging a culture of freedom not of comp competit competitiveness. So discernment in the everyday, the messy everyday, the pressured everyday, yeah, it can work. Experiment with it and remember these three principles and you'll be amazed at what can happen.